welcome everyone. It is Donna Gray here, your Stamping Up demonstrator from the scenic rim in Queensland. And I'm super excited to be here crafting with you again today. And wow, what a day it is. We have some really, really exciting things happening in the Stampin' Up! world today. So when I see that quite a few of you got your notification and you've jumped on live, I will start chatting to you about the super, super awesome things that are happening with Stampin' Up! today and for the rest of the month. So welcome. If this is the first time you have watched, my name is Donna Gray and I'm a Stampin' Up! Stem demonstrator here in the scenic rim in Queensland, Australia. And I sell all things to do with paper craft, cards, stamps, inks, uh, sorry, cardstock, stamps, inks, all of the products that you need for your paper crafting habit. So good morning, Julie, you're the first cab off the rank. So please, when you get the notification, jump in, say hello, let me know where you're watching from because I love seeing how far my videos get. And if you are watching the replay, please still jump in and say hello because I love seeing who wants to interact with my videos. And I do go back and check all of the comments on my YouTube channel. Uh, so if you are watching on Facebook, I need to tell you, I can see most of you are joining on YouTube here today. Facebook is changing things up. So, I mean, it's the way of the world. And sometimes these things happen and we get into habits that um, unfortunately, sometimes those habits get affected by certain things that that um, social media does. And Facebook is actually stopping us from being able to stream live into Facebook groups as of sometime in April. I mean, I've still got it. I can't see anyone on here at Facebook. So maybe, maybe Facebook has already done it. I don't know. Um, but um, I can only see YouTube comments. So I'm not sure whether it's not streaming to Facebook. If there is someone on Facebook, please tell me that you're watching on Facebook. But as I said, as from this month, you will not be able to see my live videos in um, Julie's on Facebook. I can see there. Um, good morning, Julie. Welcome. Um, so um, if you are watching on Facebook, Karen's on Facebook as well. So if you're watching on Facebook, you will be able to see it on my business page and you will be able to see it on my private Facebook page profile, but you will not be able to see it in my group. So if you're in my Australian card making and scrapbooking group, you won't be able to see it in there. If you're one of my team members and you watch normally in our team page, you won't be able to see it in our team page. So you physically need to either follow my business page on Facebook or jump on over here to YouTube. Like honestly, find me on YouTube. It's working at the moment, Jill, but it will not work after this month. So um, I'm trying to make sure that we're all set up because I know that you girls are going to say, I haven't seen you live for ages and it will be because you are probably trying to find me in one of those Facebook groups. So um, so you will need to either watch me here on YouTube, which is the best way to watch on YouTube, or you will need to find me on my Facebook business page. And that's the only way you're going to be able to see um, things from now on. So the in the description down below, you will see the link to find my Facebook um, page um, where it says my Facebook business page. That's the page that you need to follow me on. It also has the, the YouTube link. If you're watching on Facebook and you want to join me over here on YouTube, it will actually have a link for you to actually come over and see my channel on YouTube. And the best part about YouTube is you can see the videos by the date that I do them. So there's no more scrolling through trying to find them on my business page. You can physically go back and they're in order of when I've actually gone live on YouTube. So it's a much easier and a much more friendly way of finding me is on YouTube. OK, um, Karen said she's got you on me, uh, got me on YouTube now. So now that I've got quite a few of you on, we have a massive sale that started Stampin' Up! have got a massive sale that started today. There is up to 60 percent off some of our awesome products. Now, the two bundles that I'm going to be using today are reduced in price. So the reason why I'm actually using them today is because I am telling you it's while supplies last. So when you see these gorgeous bundles, and these are actually out of the annual catalog, when you see these gorgeous bundles used, you are going to want them. I'm telling you, you are going to want them if you don't already have them in your craft stash, but I, they are massively reduced. So I wanted to show you how awesome these products are 
and how cheap you can buy them today. So you're going to get more value for money by purchasing through our sale for the reduced items. Now, what actually happens is at the end of our catalogs, Stampin' Up! will do an end of year clearance sale. So the end of year clearance sale is the perfect time. If you are a collector of craft products, it is definitely the time to purchase but it is also definitely the time to join. And the reason why I want to say that is we have products that are up to 60% off. Now, if you put them in a starter kit, the starter kit, you're going to get a massive reduction on your starter kit anyway. You get to choose $235 worth of product and you only pay $169. That is it. $169, that's your outlay. You get to choose $235 worth of product of your choice. Now, when you see the massive reductions on these stamps and the punches that I'm actually using today and the embossing folder, you will see that you will um, you will get so much more for that $235 worth of product that you're going to choose by putting these sale items in a starter kit. And yes, they are allowed to go in a starter kit. I'm also going to be using some of the new in colors this morning. Now, you actually can't purchase the in colors just yet. You can purchase the in colors um, starting on the 1st of May. But if you actually want to join my team, put some sale items in your starter kit, plus put these new in colors in your starter kit, you actually can do that today. So it's an exciting time today that we finally got to the stage that we can actually do this. So um, so the 60% off sale, you'll see there's a link in the show more box in the, in the drop down box on YouTube. You will see there's a link that shows you, it takes you straight to my online store, to those sale items. So it actually takes you to the page where the end of year clearance sale is. So if you click on that link, it will actually take you there. If you click on my QR code that's up there in the corner, it will actually have my host code that is connected to my online store so that when you are actually um, shopping with me, there is benefits for using my host code. And I'm going to tell you about a sale that I'm going to do on top of the sale that we have with Stampin' Up. I'm actually going to give away, I'm going to show you what I have here and you'll be quite amazed when you see this. And this is only one box. These, oh, oh it's huge. These are spare kits that I have done. So when I do Stamps Club kits, when I do um, class kits, I always pack extra kits. I always cut extra kits. So in these kits, some of these kits will have card bases, ribbon, and layers ready to go, and you'll be able to use them for um, something in your craft room. Some of them, um, for the people that get in early, I'm going to be giving away bigger kits. And these bigger kits have way more in them. They have enough to, to make sometimes three cards. Um, I also have some old Stamps Club kits as well. So I'm actually doing a bit of a sale. So for anyone that, that buys over $150 worth of product, if you buy $150 worth of products during the month of April 2024 using my host code, I'm going to give you one free kit as my gift. If you order $200 or more, I'm going to give you two free kits. Now, this is only going to happen while these kits all last, okay? So um, so if you spend $150 or more, you'll get one free kit. If you spend $200 or more, you will get two free kits. If you spend $250 or more, you should be joining my team. Even at $200, you should be joining my team. Um, but I will actually give you three free kits. So that's while those kits last. So it's a shopping special that I'm going to run during the month of April. It's actually my birthday month. So I want to give back to all of you people that purchased products from me. I want to give back to you. So I've got lots and lots of these kits available. And I've just got a cobweb on me. I've got lots and lots of these kits available um, for anyone that pay places in order using my host code. Okay. So that is going to run right through from the 9th of April today, 2023-24, right through to the end of April, which is the 30th of April, 2024. So anyone that orders um, $150, you will get one free kit. If you order $200, you'll get two free kits. If you order three, uh, $250, you will get three free kits.
Now, also too, at the $250 mark, you will actually also earn stamp and rewards yourself. So if you go over the $250 mark, don't use my host code, get the stamp and rewards yourself. And, um, and you will be able to earn those three free kits. So it's really awesome. They're, they're card bases, layers, ribbons, embellishments. So you can actually definitely create something. And I can see someone's already clicked on my shopping link. So thank you very much for anyone that wants to shop. So um, so I would really appreciate the sales during the month of April. I'm about to go away at the end of April. So my crafty sessions are going to have to stop for about 12 days. You're going to miss me, but I'm going to share a lot of what I'm going to be doing on my incentive trip with Stampin' Up. So there's um, a, a small amount of us demonstrators that are leaders in the company that we work our business and we actually earn incentive trips. And I have to put the disclaimer out there that 0.01% of the company um, achieve the incentive trip and we're about to go to Mexico. So there's a fair bit of hype and a fair bit of excitement happening between all of us that have earned the trip, that we're all organizing our itineraries for things and we're going to Cancun in Mexico and we are actually going to go to this massive resort that has these theme parks all connected to it and we are going to be doing driving four-wheel buggies, we're going to be doing um, zip lining, we're going to be swimming and, and going down water slides and um, and floating down cenotes and you name it. It would absolutely be amazing. So, um, um, Lynn, I, I, I know everyone is upset about the catalogs. There has been an issue with the catalogs, but catalogs are starting to arrive right now. Um, so we need to keep positive. Obviously, there was an issue with um, catalogs being, um, I think, in our warehouse, but they are actually starting. I still don't have my brand new catalogs um, from what I've done in my order. So uh, hopefully they're going to be arriving today. So for anyone that hasn't got a demonstrator, you haven't been working with a demonstrator and you actually would like to purchase some products, I would appreciate any of your online orders that will help me um, achieve uh, my goals for this month. And um, I'm happy to send you out a catalog. If you are a customer of mine that has shopped with me for the last six months, I will automatically go through and send you a catalogue. If you haven't shopped with me in that last six months, you will not be on the list to get a catalogue. So I do have some people that reach out to me that placed orders over 12 months ago and wonder why they don't get a catalogue. And it's because you haven't ordered in the last six months. So if you've ordered in the last six months, you will be on my list to actually receive a catalogue. If you would like a catalogue, please email me or um message me i would love to um i would love to send you a catalog all right so let's get to crafting because that's what we're all here for so i've chosen a couple of products today that are actually reduced um in the sale so the reason why i chose these products are they are absolutely gorgeous products and i'm sad to see them go but i actually think it will be um it will be great to actually celebrate and create some beautiful creations with these um, before they go. Okay, so these are, are currently available at the moment. So I just want to run through the prices of things at the moment. So currently the Petal Park stamp set, it was $41 retail to buy. It has been reduced to $20.50. So $20.50 is going to get you the stamp set. Now, the actual punch that goes with it has not been reduced. It is still at $39. But the stamp set is reduced quite a bit. So from $41 down to $20.50. So we're going to create a cute card with that. I'm going to create two cards for you. It's a special treat this morning. I'm going to create two cards for you this morning. All right. Now, the next one that I actually want to play around with here too is the Country Bouquet Stamp Punch and the embossing folder. Now, all three of these items are all reduced in our sale. So all three of these items are on sale. So the Country Bouquet stamp set was $41. It's now $16.40. The, um, the punch, the Country Bouquet punch was $39. It is now $19.50. And the Country Blossoms embossing folder was $15 and it's been reduced to $10.50. Okay. So um so this whole the whole three products are all reduced. 
the whole three. So um, this is definitely a bargain to buy. So let's add that up. We've got um, $16.40 and you may as well say $20 uh, for the punch. So we'll say um, so $36 plus the – so for $46, around $46 you can get all of these products. How awesome is that? That is so cheap to get three things like that all in one go. So um, – um, Lisa says that she's coming in late. We were in the direct path of the total eclipse. What an emotional experience. Yeah. Um, I actually have never been fortunate enough to um, to actually like watch an eclipse. I know you've got to be very careful when you're watching the eclipse, but I haven't actually ever been fortunate enough to be able to do that. Sue says, need photos from Mexico, please. I will definitely be, um, I will definitely be sharing as much photos, as much of my experience in Mexico as I possibly can. All right, so let's get to creating a cute card using this Country Bouquet um, stamp, punch, and the actual embossing folder. So first of all, I think I want to use some of our gorgeous in colors. So I think I'm going to use our Pretty in Pink cardstock. Well, there's a card base there, I think. Pretty in Pink cardstock. Um, I'm going to use this one here is fast becoming one of my one of my favorites summer splash who doesn't love pretty and pink and summer splash look at that how beautiful that is together so I'm actually going to create a fun card using these awesome colors so I think I'm going to do uh, the card base and I'm going to double check that that is cut and it's not cut the right way so I'm going to have to bring out my paper trimmer so I'm going to cut my card base at five and three quarter inches by eight inches, which is my regular card base size. You all know, um, well, you should know by now, but if you're brand new to watching me, I do have a video in my beginner card making class videos that actually shows how to make your card bases and how to get the best out of um, your A4 piece of cardstock. Um, so please check that video out. If you haven't seen that video, please jump onto my YouTube channel and check that video out because I can tell you, you will never waste another bit of cardstock ever again once you actually cut your card bases and layers the way I show. Now I'm actually going to cut a summer splash layer for, um, underneath. So we'll do that. So that one is cut at five and a half by three and three quarters. So that's going to give me a summer splash layer to go on my front, which is cute. Now I need a piece of basic white cardstock, which we will cut that one at three and three and five eighths by five and three eighths. And that's actually going to give me a layer to go on the front just here like that. We will also cut a three and three quarter by five and a half to go on the inside of our card. Okay, so that's the insert of our card. So we've got all those layers happening there. Okay, so let's bring in the stamp set. I actually, no, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to emboss with the Countryside Blossoms embossing folder. So I'm going to emboss that white layer first to add a little bit of texture in on the background of our card. And this embossing folder is really, really pretty. Really, really pretty. Okay, so let's bring in our cut and emboss machine with the right plate. So now this is actually one of our regular thin embossing folders okay so you can always feel whether they're the regular ones or whether they're the 3d ones the 3d ones feel a lot thicker so you can always feel it if it feels thin you think no nope, that's a regular one if it feels quite thick and chunky that's a 3d one so on our plates we actually have um on our cut and emboss machine we actually have the combinations here that we need to look at to know what combinations we're going to use to actually run that embossing folder through so first of all we've got cutting up here that's the first lot of instructions and then we've got embossing down here in the second lot of instructions so in the middle part of your base plate of your cut and emboss machine it shows you now it says here if you read this it says using with standard embossing folders so standard embossing folders means our thin ones. So the regular ones that we always have, 
It tells us to use plate number one and all of our plates are actually numbered. It tells us to use plate number one and two of the number three. So number three and they're numbered as well, as you can see here, are our clear cutting pads. Now, one of my clear cutting pads, as you can see, I always like to use one as my bottom one. And then I try to keep the top one as clear and clean as I can. Um, but eventually it ends up as my bottom one. <laughs> so when my bottom one gets quite, um, quite old and horrible and quite a few marks, then I actually swap it over. So we're going to do number one and number three underneath our embossing folder with the fold going through our embossing machine first because we're only going to roll it one way so we want the fold to be there so if it is not directly straight it's got the open gap on that on the bottom part for it to be able to um to go through the machine if we put the fold the other way around down the bottom down here and we went through with the open part first if it's not quite even you can tend to crack your embossing folders so please Always put your fold going through first and always put a plate on top. If you don't put a plate on top, you'll find that you'll warp your embossing folders and they end up looking like a duck's bill. <laughs> and once they are like that, you physically cannot, you cannot get them to go back to the way they should be. All right, so we have now embossed that gorgeous piece of cardstock. Now, if you are brand new and you don't have a cut and emboss machine, I, I remember when my mother first started to do this with me, she used to prep kits and I would say, okay, now you've got to run those through an embossing folder. And when she used to take them out, she'd go, that's so pretty, which as you can see, it is like that. So my mother is a lady that sews. She does a lot of sewing and things and made a lot of our, our um, clothes and things as we were growing up. And she said when she first seen this with embossing the cardstock, she said, that is just like when you get material and they have that pattern on it. Now, for all the sewers out there, the material with the pattern on it, is it called a nap? Is that what the pattern on the top of a material? So that I'm sure there will be some sewing people out there that are watching this video. Is that what they call the pattern? It's like an engraved, it's a raised up pattern on material and you used to be able to, well, you can still buy material like it but I think it was called nap I think it was k-n-a-p was um what they would call it all right so we now have an embossed layer to go on our summer splash now the way I cut my layers I only have a fine minute border around if you want more of a layer a larger layer a, a larger um, showing of that summer splash instead of only taking it down one eighth of an inch smaller you take it down a quarter of an inch smaller now I do show that in that beginner card um, cutting card bases and layers I do show that in that video to show you how to get a bigger a bigger showing of the color in behind so I'm just going to add some glue on behind that because that's all I really want to do on that embossed layer Okay, so we have that and that. All right, so now I'm, I'm going to fold my card base in half so that we've got that sorted. And then I'm going to put my layer for the inside, inside my card base so I don't get confused with that and I know where to find it when I go to do my inside layer. So I'm just going to pop that inside my card base and pop it aside. Now I'm going to take a scrap piece of basic white and I'm going to stamp some of these cute little hearts that are in this lovely stamp set okay so we've got a couple of different little hearts now the punch as you can see when you see that that's how the punch actually punches out and I'm just going to grab our stamp so we have this stamp here that when we stamp it and line it up with our punch, it's going to be able to punch out those two hearts. So we can do those two hearts in one color. We can do this heart in a different color and we can also do our leaves. So I'm going to mount all of those things up and I think I'm gonna need a different, um, let me see if I can fit that on there. No, I need a bit bigger block. Um, I think I'm gonna need a different piece of cardstock because I don't think that one's got enough. Let me see, I've got a. I'll just grab a bit in a minute. All right, so we're going to do that. We're going to mount this little heart up. 
Okay, and we've got some super cute little hearts that we might um, stamp around on a sentiment or something. Our leaves are the other thing. That's what I needed. That and pop them on there. Okay, so because we're using the new colours, I thought I might use the new colours um, with stamping these. I'm going to get rid of that piece of cardstock and I'm going to get another piece that I can use. Okay, this has got a bit of stamping on the back, but we will use it to use it up. All right, so I think I'm going to grab my Pretty in Pink. Now, when it comes to these more solid, I need to clean that because it looks a bit grungy. Um, when it comes to these more solid stamps, um, it's always good to massage your ink down into your ink pads to actually get a really nice stamped image. And the reason why I say that is because sometimes our ink pads are a little bit too inky. Um, okay, so Carol saying raised pattern is called brocade and nap is for texture. Well, there you go. <laughs> I did have a little bit of sewing experience, but not a lot. So, um, so there you go. All right, so what I'm actually going to do is with this brand new ink pad, I'm actually going to massage the ink down into my ink pad. Okay, so can you see what I'm doing here? All I'm doing is taking a bone folder and it's always handy to have a paper towel, which I have some over here, um, just to clean off your bone folder or have a bone folder especially for this. I do normally, this one is one of the bone folders that I use for it. Now, once we've massaged it down into the ink pad, it makes it better for us to ink up our stamp and it's not going to be too inky and we're going to get a much nicer stamped image than what we were going to get before. And I've just done that the wrong way. Let's, um, I need to be able to go, I need to have it down at the bottom here. So let's try that again. And we'll go down the bottom here. See, now it's even still quite inky with that. So I'm going to massage again a little bit more. Can you see how it's a little bit blotchy? I want to massage more so that you've really got that ink, pushing that ink down into the bottom of your ink pad and now let's ink it up and see whether we get a better stamped image okay can you see how this one here is like this is not a, a proper clear stamp um so it's meant to have that blotchy type of look but this this one here can you see this one here's got blotchy but it's really blurred around the edges this one has a much cleaner edge so by by massaging like that you'll find that you'll get a much better stamped image um julie says she uses the stamparatus but we don't sell the stamparatus anymore so um yeah the stamparatus is really good and i need to just cut a little bit off that to be able to tilt my i stamped it a bit far up from the bottom um so making sure that when you grab that okay now you could make a template because I now have two little leaves that I could have I could have stamped as well. But I've got my two hearts there. So that's the first thing I want to do. This next heart that I've got, I want to stamp in Summer Splash just to have a little bit of interest. So we can stamp that one in our Summer Splash. Like that. And of course, our punch will punch that out which is cute. Okay, so we've got that and we've got that. Then I'm actually going to stamp my two leaves. I'm going to massage my ink in my summer splash as well because I've got a fair bit of um, a fair bit of ink happening and I've got a couple of a couple of I don't know, paper fiber bits or something. I need to get out of my ink pad first. some fluff or something on my ink pad I'll get it off there okay and then I've made a mess on my ink pad but anyway all right so let's massage that ink down again 
And it doesn't hurt your ink pad to do this. It just gives you a much better stamped image when you've got brand new ink pads that are very inky. So I've got to quickly grab my leaves and hopefully I'm going to, how's my punch go? That way. So we need to have our leaves going up that way. So let's punch our leaves. I'm just going to punch them down here. There we have it there. Okay, so I might actually stamp another couple of leaves because I might need a few more leaves for this card. Okay, so now I'm just going to line up in my punch again. Uh, Jill, you learn something every day. You were having trouble yesterday with the stamp pad. Yep, and honestly, it's just because they're brand new, so they've got a lot of ink in them. You don't have the problem when you've got an older ink pad. Um, for the simple fact that the older ink pad isn't quite as inky. And so um, it the, the problem is when you've got a lot of ink in it, it creates some bubbles um, on your stamp and it, and it doesn't give you a nice stamped look. All right, so we've got some leaves. We've got, we've got some white hearts from cutting that out, but we've got four green leaves. We've got four white leaves because of cutting that out. We've got some white hearts. We've got a pink heart. And another little pink heart. So we've got quite a lot now to embellish the front of our card. So let's pop these in a little bit of an arrangement on the front of our card. So this is our card front. Of course, we've got pink. We've got green. We've got white, but white's probably not going to stand out. So I don't think we need to worry about the white. We might actually pop the pink here. But then we can pop some green leaves coming out from behind our hearts just to create a little bit of interest in behind the hearts and it's more or less like mixing some flowers with um with the hearts which i think is quite cute okay and we could even probably put a white leaf in amongst there same thing there just to break up those two green leaves. All right, now I'm going to grab a sentiment out of here. Like you can see there, that is just so super cute. How pretty is it? Um, yeah, so... Um, not quite sure, but I, honestly, we don't want to talk about lawsuits here on my video. Um, can we can we not concentrate on that and just concentrate on the fun, crafty things? It's to do with copyright laws and things like that. And it, it actually was better, yeah, it was better to actually take our stamparatus away than have the issues. So, um, so all right. So we can now stamp a great sentiment on here. I think what I... I, I want to stamp, I love that we are friends, I think is a really, really cute sentiment. So let's say, I love that we are friends. Now, do I want to stamp this in? This is the question, people. Do I want to stamp this in? Um, do I want to stamp it in summer splash? I keep calling it summer, summer shadow. I don't know why, but summer splash. Or do I want to stamp it in our um, beautiful, pretty, and pink? Type it into the comments and let's see what we want to um, what we want to stamp it with. So, summer splash or pretty and pink? Tell me which one. Type it into the comments and let's have a bit of a vote on which way we want to go. So, please feel free to share this video. If you're watching this video, please feel free to share it onto your Facebook so that other people can join us and we can get more people jumping on and hanging out with us. Um, pretty in pink, Summer Splash. So two for Summer Splash, three for Summer Splash, two for Pretty in Pink, four for Summer Splash, two for Pretty in Pink still, four for Summer Splash, three for Pretty in Pink, five for Summer Splash. Summer Splash has got it because once we get to five, that's the way we go. <laughs> All right, so let's ink up our sentiment in Summer Splash and we will pop it down on there because I'm going to cut this. I'm going to cut this down. I love that we are friends. How cute is that? I love that we are friends. Now, um, someone may be able to, I, I'm nearly positive that our gold and our silver 
thread i'm going to i'm just going to look it up people i've got this gold and silver thread sitting on my desk and i have a bit of a mess here with the gold but then we've got gold now this is um someone tell me the name of it it's been around for so long that i can't um um it went with uh let me let me just see i want to see if it's still available in our online store if someone knows type it into the comment and let me know um elegant <laughs> i think it's called simply elegant trim simply elegant trim now it's retiring soon people now this is honestly it is a staple in my craft room i have used the simply elegant trim in so many cards so many things it is a great um it's a great trim um you get the silver and the and the gold in the pack together um which is really really awesome and i'm going to i'm going to cut that a fair bit because i want to be able to pop that in under here okay so we've got that happening there and um <laughs> Um, you actually type the at symbol Karen before their name. You type the at and then their name and it will come up. Um, Karen's trying to work out how you actually can comment. You can actually even click on their comment and say reply as well. All right, so am I going to use silver or am I going to use gold, people? Let me know. Silver or gold? Um, silver or gold? Let me know. So... I'm going to glue this. Uh, I want to put the silver or gold down first. So silver or gold. I don't mind gold, but I think silver is going to look nice on this card. Silver, silver. So I've got two for silver, one for gold, three for silver, four for silver. I think silver's going to win it. Five for silver. We've got it. All right. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use some Seal Plus. Now I have to be very careful here because we have embossed this layer. So when you're using Seal Plus on an embossed layer, you have to be very careful. Now I've just popped two strips of um, Seal Plus there. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to create. Now you can you can do this one of two ways. Some people some people create the loops on their finger and then pop it down. Some people create it like this. I like to create it like this because I'm a, I am tend to like to have things placed where I want them to be. I know, I know it's supposed to be this tasseled um, look, but I tend to like to place it exactly where I want it to be so I can... Um, control where the loops are going to be so i want to pop a loop coming down through there and i think that's probably about enough okay now another secret to this to keep everything where you want it to be or just to keep your ends in and i'm hoping that i have um bear with me my tear and tape of i know that there's one out in the cupboard out here So sometimes I like to just put a little bit of tear and tape just over where my ends are to make sure that the tear and tape doesn't come out, okay? Um, Arlene, you're not watching the replay. You're actually watching live. I am live right now. So Arlene's saying that she's watching the repl replay, but we are actually on here live. So you're actually watching it live, not the replay. All right, so I'm going to pop my hearts up on some dimensionals. And you're getting two cards today, not just one. So it's a pretty uh, pretty good deal today. And I'm only on my first card. So, um, so there's more to come. So as I said, this country bouquet, <clears throat> country bouquet stamp set is reduced plus the punch plus the embossing folder that we're using underneath 
as well. Hey, Nadine, welcome. Lovely to see you on. Okay, so I've got a couple of hearts here that I'm popping up on dimensionals. And then I'm going to arrange my leaves after I've popped up. <laughs> it's great news, Arlene. Well, I'm glad that you now realize that you're on live. So how awesome is that? Um, Karen's learning, she said, so that's good. All right, so I'm just going to pop that one down there like that. Okay, this one here, I'm going to pop up with a mini dimensional because it's littler. So let's grab a mini. And we're going to pop that one up on our green outline one. You do learn something every day. <laughs> okay, so I think I'm just going to pop that one there. All right, now with my leaves, I'm going to curl the leaves up a little bit just to give them a little bit of dimension. And you really only need to do that just with your fingers just curling them in your fingers and you get them to to curl up on the ends it just adds a little bit more dimension to your to your card and it brings the leaves to life a little bit <laughs> okay um so we're just curling those up a little bit and then i'm just going to I'm just going to add some glue dots onto them and then we can pop them in underneath where we want them to be. So if I can find my glue dots, they're out of the, there they are. I was going to say they're out of the box where they should be. And, you know, I was just looking for that tear and tape and it's right there in my drawer. I just didn't look hard enough. I think I must have had a, a, a boy's look, not a girl's look. Sorry, boys out there. <laughs> Okay, so let's pop some of these in underneath here. So I've got one leaf there. I'm going to pop another one in under there. So we've got a couple of leaves happening there with our glue dots. I might put a white one. Actually, I could put a white one. Let me see. No, I'm going to put a white one in the middle of those. No, I'm going to just pop a white one up there. Okay. White looks okay, even though it's white against white. <laughs> you love the boys look, Lisa? Yeah. I I, I, I used to always say <laughs> um, to my husband when I was married, how about you go and have a girl's look? Like you've probably had a boy's look. How about you go and have a girl's look? And um, he used to go, all right then, you know, like, but yeah, it was a simple case of I've lost a leaf. Oh, there it is on my leg. Um, yeah, it used to be, have you had a man's look or a woman's look? All right, so I'm just going to pop that one uh, down in under there. And this white one. Actually, the white one could probably pop under our sentiment because I'm going to pop my sentiment in here now. Okay, I'm going to cut the sentiment off. Now, I left extra on my sentiment to be able to do this, to be able to work out where I was going to pop that. And I want that to pop in under there. I can still pop, cut a little bit more off. And I'm going to pop it up on dimensionals, but I'm going to pop it in underneath that heart. Okay. So it looks like the sentiment is coming out from under there. So let's grab some dimensionals. Now with this one, it's probably easier just to put my dimensionals down here where I need them to be, and then I can just slide the card in underneath. So that's also helping that um, elegant trim to be hidden in underneath, but it's also helping to hold it. So I'm just going to slide that in underneath and press it like that. I actually was going to cut that at an angle. So let's, sorry, I'm I'm a bit behind myself here. Fallen over myself. There we go. Cut it at an angle. It looks better cut at an angle. All right. So um, as you can see, a really cute card coming together. Aren't these colors just gorgeous? Don't you just love the brand new colors? Honestly, i I'm, I'm smitten with the new in color. So these are actually the, the colors that I'm using is Pretty in Pink and Summer Splash. Um, and it's coming in our new catalog. 
or you can grab my in color club which is really fantastic you get to uh collect all five colors over a five month oops over a five month period you just see all the glue i just put on my glass mat okay because i dropped it all right let's wiggle that around and get it where it needs to be i'm too busy worrying about my glue on my glass mat we will just use my chamois to get rid of that okay beauty of this glass mat now people have asked and asked and asked about the glass mat unfortunately we have not had any indication that the glass mat is coming anytime soon it was something that you could get as a joining offer and we as demonstrators could actually get the glass mat before um, the joining office started so we were able to get our hands on it and I have had demonstrators I have customers I have people asking me left right and center so I'm just going to put it out there we cannot get the glass mat and I have had no indication when the glass mat is coming all right so I actually want to I think I want to stamp this cute little petal sorry pretty in pink heart I think I want to stamp one of them there like that so we've got that then there's some cute little hearts in here which I think are really really cute we've got these cute little hearts so I think I want to stamp them and mind you this little block is going to so if you don't have any of these little blocks you really need to get it they are retiring these little blocks sadly um, but they are they are perfect for when you've got these little stamps. Just saying. All right, now I want to do some summer splash ones in around that as well. Let me just clean that off. Okay, let's add some little summer splash ones in there too. How cute. These colors are so pretty together. You can tell me to stop. <laughs> but there we go. We've got some cute little hearts happening there on that. So I love that we are friends. I think I'm just going to leave it. There's really not a sentiment that I can do here. I probably should have said I just wanted to say on the front and then I love that we are friends inside. But anyway, um, I think it's a little bit much for me to say. It's nice to say I love that we're friends, but to say I love you, mm, a little bit, depending on how good a friend, I guess. <laughs> but I know I wouldn't be saying that to my friends. All right, so let's glue that on the inside. And then, of course, we have some gorgeous tinsel gems that will go with this perfectly. Although, ooh, I could use the in color, the new in color dots. Okay, let's get some of them out. I've got these ones here, or I've got another pack that I think would be much nicer. These ones here. I think it's a very soft card. So which ones, left or right? Tell me which ones you think I should use, left or right. We're going to be on this video forever today, aren't we? <laughs> You're glad you have two of the A blocks. You use them all the time. I know. I don't know why they're retiring it either, Lisa. I agree. Um, I'll have a great day at work, Karen. Okay, so we've got right, 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 right. So I'm thinking, right. Okay, so I'm thinking that I was thinking that this way anyway because I was thinking they're a lot um, softer in colour. just wondering whether I have a pack already opened. I don't think I do. Or do I? No. I still want to open another. I do have some opened already. I know I do because I used them at, um, no, maybe I don't. Okay. We're going to open a pack. Oh, a few of you said left. All right. So I think I'm going to use these ones here, which are obviously the summer splash color. And if I can find my handy dandy take your pick tool there it is with my putty end now if you don't have a handy dandy take your pick tool with the putty end i'm telling you you need to add it to your order it is fantastic and it is honestly 
a staple in my craft room. I use it all the time, um, especially to pick up embellishments and things and to pick out um, embossed, uh, like when you're, when you're cutting and embossing. Um, although I could use the pink. Which one? Okay, so now I have an issue. Do I want to use the pink? And I just looked. I've got a bit of a bit of um, ink Ugh. on there, but I'm going to use my sand eraser to remove the little smudge of ink that I just put on the front of this card because we don't want a smudge. It's a pretty card. <laughs> Lynn's saying have both. We always know, Lynn, you're going to say both. Take your pick is a must for you, Lisa. Yep. Um, so which in, which one? Are we going to do pretty in pink or are we going to do summer splash? So say PP or SS. PP or SS. Type it into the comments. Mix the two. Ah, see, Lynn, you've started something saying both. Mix the two. Both. Everyone's saying both. One, two, three, four. <laughs> We've got some saying Summer Splash, some saying Pretty in Pink. Summer Splash, Pretty in Pink. If it's even at the moment. Summer Splash, Pretty in Pink. Oh, Pretty in Pink. Mix the two. Okay, mix the two. Mix the two's got it because that's five. <laughs> All right, so let's do... I'm going to do that and maybe a little pink one in there. Oh, actually mixing the two does look pretty. And a little summer splash. Oh, no, let's do here. And I might do a pretty and pink up the top or there. And we might do a summer splash on this heart. Oh, if I can get it to stick. Um there okay how cute is that and my fold on my card is so bad so bad so let's bring in that bone folder and crease my card a little bit better than what I have done let's hope that we can get it to do that yes we can ah better my fold was so crooked it wasn't funny all right so and then of course we all know what's going to make it better everyone Type it in the comments. What's going to make it better? Where did I put the packet off them? There it is. It is. The, the colours are so soft and gorgeous. I Like I, I feel like the Summer Splash and the Pretty in Pink are going to be great baby colours. I haven't got a bow because I've actually done the, um, I've done the, the bits and pieces in underneath there. Yep, wink of Stella. You all I know everyone's saying a bow, but I've I've done the I've done the twining underneath. So let's grab some wink. I feel like this is my empty one. May not be. Oh no, it's not my empty one. It's definitely it's definitely working. Okay, so a spritzing of our wink of Stella on the front and another spritzing inside. And we could even just do some little bits of wink on our heart. What a cute, <laughs> no bow must be killing you. I know, we'll, we'll get a bow on the next one. <laughs> well, I'm assuming we'll get a bow on the next one. I don't know. <laughs> All right, so cute card. As I said, the Country Bouquet stamp set is reduced from $41 to $16.40. The Country Bouquet Punch is reduced from $39 to $19.50. And the embossing folder, which is this one here, the um, Countryside Blossoms embossing folder is reduced from $15 to $10.50. So as I said, for about $46, you're going to get that bundle to be able to create these gorgeous cards. So honestly, it is definitely, if you don't have it in your craft stash and you are a collector of craft products, I am telling you, you're going to want that one. All right, so let's move that aside and let's bring in our petal park. 
So Petal Park is the next one. Now, I love this stamp set. I absolutely love the way that we can stamp the leaves, and I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. And then you can also stamp flowers and get quite a few flowers punched up punched out with our with our um our punch now the stamp set itself is reduced from 41 dollars to 20 dollars and 50 cents but the petal park punch is still 39 and i have a feeling this punch is going through am i correct i have a feeling let me see in my stampin up shop again because i need to work out whether this punch is going through so i can give you the right information um p e t a l p a Okay. Okay. Let me see what it says. Yes, the punch is still going through. So we're going to have this punch, but the stamp set is retiring. So I love the punch. And the reason why I love the punch is that you can physically get um, quite a few flowers, three flowers cut out with one lot of stamping, which is really, really an awesome way of being able to do it. Now, whenever you're going to have a stamp set like this, you need to work out the way the stamps are and the way your punch goes, and you need to be able to stamp the way the punch is going to be able to punch it out, especially the leaves. The leaves are something that you need to, I mean, here's the little leaf that you can actually punch out with the punch. Um, yeah, the punch is in the new catalogue, Judy, yes. Okay, so um, we're going to be using some of our in color again so i think i'm going to use because summer splash is definitely or should i use the other green okay we need to probably look at this can you tell i'm not a fond lover of this shy shamrock i have a full card pack not opened and i'm it's not that i'm not a fun fond lover i love the summer splash better um there's the two greens together, okay? So it's not that I don't like this colour, it's that I like this colour more. <laughs> I'll have to put it that way. I like this colour more, so that's why, sorry, this colour more, so that's why I've been using it. But let's give our Shy Shamrock a run for its money. And I think I'm going to use probably our Petunia Pop with our flowers. How does that sound? So let's grab one sheet of each out. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a Petunia Pop card base because I love Petunia Pop. <laughs> All right, so let's do five and three quarters by eight for our card base. Okay, and let's do a card layer so let's pop our base there let's do a card layer of five and a half by three and three quarters for our card base uh, our layer i mean let's grab some basic white and we'll cut some layers for the front and the inside so let's do um five and a half by three and three quarters can I'll just do I'll have two of these layers then I'll have a spare for the next time I want to do a card I'm only doing two cards today but the next time I want to do a card I'll pop my spare one there okay so then we need one that's going to be five and three eighths because this is for the front of our card five and three eighths by three and five eighths is my layer for the front by three and five eighths the two greens look pretty together. Yep. Okay, so let's pop one of those in there. Let's pop that one there. I'm going to have to fold my card base so I know that that's my one for the inside. Now, whenever, because my inside layer is always different to my outside layer that's on the front here because this one's cut smaller to get that nice border all the way around, I always like to just fold my card base and pop my insert into my card base so that I know that it's in there and it's safe. And when I go to do the inside of my card, it's ready to go. Now, one of the things that I know over the time that I've been with Stampin' Up, which I've been with Stampin' Up now for nearly eight years, um, people always said to me, it's great that I do the insides of my card. I never, ever send a card without an insert in it. Now, I always think the card is naked without an insert. Who agrees with that? 
Um, um, I never ever send a card with a naked insert, all right? So I always make sure I've got that. So I'm going to pop that aside. And then I'm actually going to do a card that um, was really, really pretty, but I'm going to use the, the new colors. So let's get out my Shy Shamrock. Actually, I could pair these up. Let's do Shy Shamrock and let's do our, um, my favorite, Summer Splash. I'm going to do the leaves in Shy Shamrock and Summer Splash, okay? So let's mount up. We've got an outline of leaves and we've also got a solid part of the leaves now what I find is if I do um, and I'm gonna have to put it on this gorgeous block that I bought the other day that is my favorite size that for some reason I can't find the others I'm gonna do the lined image first And the reason why I'm going to do the lined image, it's going to be the darker out of the two, but I want to be able to line up my solid part then on that lined image. So I'm going to ink that up. Now, because it's such a large stamp, I'm actually going to take my ink pad to the stamp. Yes, Lynn says that it looks more finished with the inside done, and that is correct. All right. So let's do one up here. So I'm going to do one up the top of the card. Okay. So look at that shy shamrock. Isn't it a lovely color? And then I'm going to do one down the bottom of the card. Okay. One. I'm going to change it around. Yep. One down the bottom of the card like, oh, no, I'm doing it the same way, am I? Or did I? No, okay, I'm turning it around that way. All right, and the reason why I want to turn it around is just to get it a little bit different. All right, so we've got that down the bottom of the card. So we've got that. Now I'm going to get rid of this stamp, and then I'm going to get my solid stamp to put over the top. Now, um, sometimes with the solid stamp, I think um, you're looking forward to see what I'm going to do with the inside of the card. Sometimes with the solid stamp, I actually like to – Maybe sometimes stamp off. Um, maybe I should do a bit of a trial and see what it looks like stamped off. Uh, actually, I might do that. I'll just grab a scrap piece. Where's that scrap piece that I threw over here? Let's ink that up. I just want to do a trial run and see which way I want it to be. So I'm just going to stamp that randomly there. Okay, let's clean that off. And I didn't stamp it properly, but I'm, I'm just going to do it so I can see what I'm going to do. Now, one of the things when you're doing this with a stamp that you've got two stages of the stamping that you do um, a lined image and you do a solid image, um, depending on what the stamp is, is the way that you need to do it. I find that doing the lined image first is just a little bit easier to line up when it comes to popping the other part on. Oh, get it there. Okay. So we've then got the solid part of the leaves. Now, the reason why I did this um, this trial one is to see whether I want to stamp off the Summer Splash or whether I want to do it full strength. I want to see how good it is to um, – now, the best thing with these is to let them fall onto your block freely to get them to line up. Okay, so let me see what we have here. All right. It's not going to line up real well. I need to move that a little bit. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to line it up on my stamped image here and then put it on my block. Now, um, because this stamp has a bit in the middle that is um a bit in the middle that is quite thin so because it's got a bit in the middle that's quite thin it can actually go onto your block in a really weird way so can you see how i've just lined it up on that stamp okay now i can put my block down on there and pick it up and it's going to stamp on that really really well Hopefully, it's going to work with these. 
I will do the same thing when I go to do that. So I'm going to do this on my spare bit. Now I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to stamp it off and just see what it looks like stamped off with Summer Splash just to see because I feel like I'm going to stamp it off. But I may not. I may end up um I may end up doing it full strength. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, no, I think I like it stamped off. What do you think? I haven't got it lined up real well there, but I think I'm going to do it stamped off. Okay? Because if I did it full strength, it might be too heavy. Let's try the full strength. I feel like it's going to be too heavy and too too much color. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we're stamping off. I've made that educated guess. We're going to stamp off. You won't believe what I just did. I just spilt embossing powder all over my carpet. <laughs> my tray had gold embossing powder in it, and it now has gold embossing all over my carpet. I'll have to get the vacuum cleaner out when I'm finished my video. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line that up on this again, okay? And the reason being is because I did take, I did remove that stamp um, and take it off. So I need to um, line them up so I can see exactly where it needs to be. All right, so let's go here and see if we can line this up nice the way we want it to be on our stamped image. So all I'm doing is looking through the stamp, lining it up exactly where it needs to be. Now I can pick it up on the block because those two were stamped the same. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, I've I've never done that before in my life. So there you go. Um, it just, it fell as I went to grab something, it, as I went to put the cleaner up there. All right, so let's grab our stamped image. So I've stamped off and I'm now going to line up, if I get it the right way, I'm now going to line up over the top of that image to stamp down on there. And it's going to give us a really nice look. So just a nice pale look. And that's actually what we were after. So let's do this and see how I'm getting all that ink over that block. I hate when that happens. And it's because I'm using the big block and trying to ink it down. So I'm just going to wipe that and clean it. Okay. And I'm going to do what I normally do, which I take the ink pad to the block and do it that way. Much better, much cleaner. Let's stamp it off and let's get this baby on here uh, that way. Okay, so let's line them up over the top and we will stamp down. And it doesn't really matter if you're not totally perfect with this. It still stamps really nice anyway. All right, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my Petunia Pop. And we are going to do some nice flowers on a scrap piece of white, um, which I'll take one of those. That'll do me. All right. So now this is where we need to. So we've got this part done. This is where we need to line up. And that's going to be layered up on that and go on to the front. So we'll pop that aside. This is where we need to line up our stamps that we're going to um, we're going to get them to go into our punch the correct way. So once again, I'm going to pop these stamps onto a block. Okay, so what I'm saying is make sure you stamp onto your cardstock how your punch is going to punch it out, okay? So that's the way we're going to stamp. So we're going to stamp down here so that we can punch it out. So I'm going to stamp down the bottom here, and then I'm going to rotate my paper and stamp up the top so that we get a, a few flowers. Um, now I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use Petunia Pop, but I think I'm going to do the insides of the flowers. Uh, I might do the insides of the flowers with Petunia Pop stamped off. So let's try that. So we're going to do Petunia Pop. Okay, I might get an extra one here. So let's try this and I might get another one here. Okay. 
Now, the reason why I'm doing this is I'm not quite sure. Okay, that one's going to be my trial. Um, I'm not quite sure whether I want to do the other part of the flower in pretty and pink or whether I want to do it in petunia pop stamped off. So once again, I'm going to line up this here on my flowers and it's lining up quite well, so that's not too bad. So I'm going to try pretty and pink as the solid part. Okay, so pretty and pink and I need to massage my pretty and pink. It's too inky, too, too inky for solid stamps. So let's clean that off. Okay, let's clean that off. Now we're going to massage these ink pads. I'm going to do the pretty in pink first. I'm going to massage it down so that we get a nice solid look. Massaged and get my solid stamp. I didn't clean it off. I cleaned the wrong one. <laughs> okay, get the solid stamp. We're going to ink that one up just by tapping little. And we're going to stamp it onto here. So because we've got the outline, it's easier to line up that solid stamp. Okay. I actually feel like I want to do, if I'm going to do pretty in pink, I feel like I want to do it stamped off. Or if I do petunia pop, I want to do it stamped off as well. So let's, I don't know. What do you think about that? I think I want to do petunia pop stamped off. Let's massage petunia pop down I think I want to massage petunia pop I want to stamp it off and then stamp on keeping it in the same tones wow that petunia pop's bright all right so let's ink up with petunia pop let's stamp off and let's stamp on I think I'm gonna like this better Ah, I think so. I think I've just found the perfect, perfect one. Oh, no, I did. I did stamp off. <laughs> I was like, did I stamp off? I can't remember. Okay, what do you think? I think I'm going to go with those flowers. I think they look nice. We'll forget about the pretty and pink. We're just going to do Shy Shamrock, Summer Splash, and Petunia Pop on this card. All right. So now I'm going to take my punch and I'm going to punch those out. And this is the beauty of this punch. I love it. I'm glad that the punch is going through. Um, I, I just think it's so good to be able to look at this punch out. Three flowers. All in one go. Bam. You have three flowers all in one go. Let's punch out these three. There we go. Six flowers all in one go. How cute are they? I love, love, love this punch and this stamp. Absolutely love it. So definitely make sure you pop the stamp into your order. And remember that for anyone that is, oh, I've got so much ink on my hands, it's not funny. For anyone that is going to place an order during the month of April 2024, if you place an order of $150 or more, you will get a free card kit. Um, they will just be a surprise package. It'll be mystery card kits. Um, you will get card bases, layers, and um, anything that goes in the kit. Some of them have ribbons and embellishments. Some of them have die cuts. Uh, okay, so we've got that happening there. Now, of course, we've got these gorgeous flowers that we can pop in around here, which is so, so cute. How quick can you make a gorgeous card using these beautiful flowers? Okay, how cute is that? All right, we've got to use some of the new ribbon, don't you think? I mean, you all know me. We have to use some of the new ribbon. 
So are we going to use, so the question I've got for you this time, I want you to vote. We've got four different colours of ribbon that we, well, there's five in the in colours, but four different colours of ribbon that we could use on this card. So now I want you to vote. Are we going to do Petunia Pop ribbon? Are we going to do Pretty in Pink ribbon? Are we going to do, and please no one say all of them because we're not going to do all of them. Are we going to do Shy Shamrock or are we going to do uh, Summer Splash? So type into the comments and let me know which ribbons are we going to go for. So now look at that colour combination. Isn't it gorgeous? Um, if you stamped extra, could you do double the flower? Yeah, you could double the flowers up, definitely. So Lynn's asking, that's a great question, Lynn. Yes, you can double the flowers up and look at this. You can get a three-layered flower. Can you see that? My hands are very inky. So, okay, we've got Pretty in Pink, Petunia Pop, Summer Splash, Summer Splash, Summer Splash, Petunia Pop, Petunia Pop, Petunia Pop's got it. Petunia Pop's got it. It got to five first. So that is what we're using. All right. Okay. Um, so, yes, you can actually, um, you can actually, yeah, layer them all up and get a beautiful three-layered flower. Could you stamp directly on the card without doing the punch? Yes, you could, Barbara. Yes, definitely. The stamps actually fit. Now, I'm not going to do it, but I'll show you with the stamps. The stamps actually fit in there. Um, let me get the way they go. The stamps actually fit in there. Yeah, so you can actually stamp down in there and you'll see that the, the leaves come out. Can you see that? So you can stamp down in there and the leaves will come out. Yes. So you can actually stamp directly onto the cardstock without the punch. All right. So let's get the Petunia Pop ribbon on here because you all know me. We have to have ribbon. Oh, my Lord, at on stage where they had the wall of ribbon. I feel like I need a wall of ribbon like that in my craft room. Um, let's pop it up a little bit more. Okay. All right, so that's going to go through the center of my card. Okay, so then, of course, I'm going to pop up that onto the front of my card base. So let's grab some dimensionals. Okay. So just remember, like all of the sale items can be put in a starter kit. And the best part about, I, I want to tell you the bonuses of why you would want to put the sale items into a starter kit. For one thing, you're going to get so much more for your money because you get to choose $235 worth of product and you only pay $169. But for the other thing is, as soon as you have purchased your sale, your starter kit, and you get your demo ID number, you can go straight back in and order sale items at the sale price with a 20% discount on top. So the one bonus that we get as a Stampin' Up! demonstrator is our discount. But the beauty of it is whatever discount for customers is happening, we as demonstrators, we actually get that discount on top of um, the sale price. So that means that if there's something that's got 60% off, we get 80% off that product. Now, there is no way that you will buy your products any cheaper than purchasing that starter kit. Now, if you have any questions about the starter kit, now this is what I do when, I'm, when I've got um, dimensionals on the back. My trick is I like to stand up. I like to hover straight over the top of my card have my pointer fingers underneath that I can line up that layer that it's got even borders all the way around, push down with my thumbs and then push it on and you'll get it straight every time. Now, a lot of people struggle with that because when you've got dimensionals, 
when you've got tear and tape, you get one go at putting it down. Yes, you can try and pull it back up. If you if you end up doing it wrong, you can get um, – Thea would have fun playing in the ribbon, on the ribbon on the wall. Now, Marilyn, I need to tell you something. I came in here the other day. Now, there was some strange noises in the middle of the night, and I came in here the other day and I looked at my ribbons and I thought, what is going on here? There are like – the ribbons were all like pulled down off the rolls and there was quite a lot of ribbon down. So I think Theo has been playing in my ribbons. So, um, yeah. All right. So for this, I'm going to use one of the sentiments out of here. Um, maybe we should use just wanted to say. So let's, let's, let's see if we can find a punch that we can put that sentiment on. Oh, one of the punches that I love is going away. Oh, no, it's not. It's not. Oh, I know what I can do. Let me see if the oval punch will fit that sentiment. Let's see if that will fit. No, it's too big. Um, or we could do for you. We could do for you. Let's try that. Add this stamp set. Uh, there it is there. For you. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to punch out. Um, so this is out of the country bouquet um, stamp that we were using, um, this one here, so the first one that I used. I'm going to use the little for you, but I'm going to punch out. I want to punch out an oval out of white. This double oval punch is going as well. So I want to punch out an oval in white, but I also want to punch out a scallopy oval. Now, do I want to punch that out in, well, we'll try it in both. This one. So let's, what is going on with my punch? That one, or do I want to put it in, something's happening there, or do I want to do it in our petunia pop? So we'll see what we can do with this. There we go. Okay. So we'll make our decision of what we want to pop on here. So I'm going to do the for you. Now it depends on what we do here. So let's make this decision. Do we want to do this? So let's let's put this together. We're going to pop our flowers down here. We've got that one, that one, and a little one. Okay. We've got this one, this one, and a little one. Now, okay, the question being here, we've got Petunia Pop ribbon. Do we want to do Petunia Pop behind or do we want to do Shy Shamrock in behind? Tell me what you think. Use the green, otherwise Petunia Pop is too dominant. Yeah, I think so too, Card Craze, but we will see. Green Oval will stand out against Petunia. So I've got two for Shy Shamrock, one for Petunia, two for Petunia. Oh, no, one, for, no. So two for Shy Shamrock, three for Shy Shamrock, one for Petunia. Keep typing into the comments, people. Shy Shamrock or, um, okay, so we've got three for Shy Shamrock. Okay, five. Shy Shamrock has done it. Okay, so we're going to do Shy Shamrock is what we're going to do. So if that's the case, I'm probably going to stamp with Petunia Pop now, okay? So that was why I needed to make the decision. Um, hey, Linda, how are you going? All right, so I wanted to make that decision. So let's do For You in Petunia Pop. We might do that and then we might do a cute little flower let's see if we can do that oh i know there's some little flowers in here just to make it cute little flowers let's just do these little flowers and i might do them uh, let's grab another one of those little blocks that's disappearing <laughs> all right so let's do some flowers here so we stamp one lot, but then we'll stamp another lot stamped off. Okay. So we've got for you on there. So let's pop 
top that up with dimensionals and I've just put my finger in the ink pad. So messy today. All right, uh, let's grab a dimensional for the back there. And another one. Oh, I've nearly finished a pack of dimensional, I mean a sheet of dimensionals there. All right, so let's do that and pop that on. So, yeah, sadly this double oval punch is going. All right, let's pop that up on dimensionals. Now I'm just going to put a row of dimensionals top and bottom because we're going to be straddling that ribbon with this sentiment. So I actually want it to be on the card more than just on the ribbon. So I'm just going to pop dimensionals top and bottom and that will adhere our ribbon and our cardstock to the front of our layer. Oh, the A block is out of stock. Well, if the A block's out of stock, that means it's gone, people. It means it's gone. Gone skis. All right, so let's do that there like that. Then, of course, our flowers. I think I want to pop them up too. <laughs> Why not? Because we can. Okay, so let's pop that one. I'm going to put that one in there first like that. Let's grab another bit of dimensional for this one. Like that. And then of course our little one. Yeah, I'm going to pop it up on one too. Why not? Lynn says she loves the punch. She uses it all the time. Yep. Yeah. It's a great punch. No worries, Christine. I hope everything's going okay with you and your hubby. There we go. So we've got three there. Now I didn't do any leaves, but honestly, you could you could stamp some leaves and punch out some leaves with the punch as well. Um, I feel like it had enough going on in this card. So we'll pop that one there. We will grab dimensional bit for that one. Whoops, nearly lost it. Yeah, beautiful fresh colours, I think. I, I think I think you're going to love these in colours. Like honestly, they go so well together. Um, they're nice and bright and well they're not they're bright and fresh, but they're not too bright. Can you understand what I mean? Like so um so Please don't wait for these things that are on sale. Please don't wait to place your order. Like, honestly, my suggestion is jump on and order them now. If there's something that you really, really need, get on and order them now because they are while supplies last. And I'm telling you, the ones that have got the higher discount on them are going to be the ones that are, are definitely going to go first. Now, I have Lorraine's probably not on here. I think Lorraine's actually gone to work this morning, one of my team members. She said that she wanted me to do um, a video on how to tie a bow. So here I am. I'm going to describe how to tie a bow. Let's take that away so we don't get it confusing us. So how I tie a bow is I always leave my ribbon on the spool. Now, the way the ribbon is on the spool the top that's showing on the outside is the top of the ribbon. That's the right side of the ribbon. And that's the way ribbons are always rolled onto the spool um, is how you actually, uh, the top side is always the right side of the ribbon. So I always place my roll of ribbon on my right hand side and I take the ribbon in my left hand side. Okay. Now, with the, the right side of the ribbon, which is going over my finger here, I'm going to make what they call a little bit like the breast cancer ribbon, okay? So I'm going to create a loop. So the right side of the ribbon is here and it's wrapping around and coming. Now, this side here is the wrong side of the ribbon, okay? The right side of the ribbon is facing down. So I've created a breast cancer loop like that. Then the next thing that I do is I wrap that ribbon around my thumb and put my pointer finger here. Now, can you see that there's a twist in the ribbon here? How we fix that is we roll our ribbon spool over twice. Okay. Now, can you see 
that that twist in the ribbon is gone. We've still got the right side of the ribbon, so it's come, it's gone up and over here, it's come down, it's creating this loop. The right side of the ribbon is still here facing me. Okay, we've twisted that over twice, so you twist it forward, you don't twist it back, you twist it forward to get that kink out. So that actually creates the way of keeping the ribbon all going in the same direction. We're going to create a loop like this, and it's going to push through where we've got our thumb. Okay, and when we create that loop and push it through, we take it so that we tighten that little knot in the middle a little bit. Okay, now when we go to pull our our loops through, we have to make sure that we're keeping our ribbon going all the same direction, which we are. So I'm pulling that and making those loops a little bit shorter, and then I'm going to pull it a little bit. Now I'm going to once again pull that through, and that ribbon is wanting to twist, but I'm not going to let it. We're going to pull it, make our loops a little bit shorter. We're going to then hold on to the two ends with these fingers. So our middle finger and our ring finger on one side, the middle finger and the other ring finger on the other hand. And we're going to hold them tight and we're going to pull the loops, okay? Now, doing that actually creates your your, your um, tails to hang down like this, okay? So by pulling them down like that and then tightening. Now you can still rearrange a little bit and that one is really wanting to twist and I don't want it to twist. So you've got to make sure that you're definitely not twisting your ribbon as it pulls through. Let me make sure I get that straight. Bad demonstration of doing this ribbon, but I am getting it to sit nice and straight. But then you pull and you've got your tails coming down, then you can squish up your loops to get them to sit a lot nicer. Now, when you want to cut your ribbon, there's two ways that you can cut your ribbon. You can cut it at an angle, and I always like to cut it at an angle because that stops it from fraying as much as I can. So I cut that one going that way, and I cut this one going this way. So I just hold it there and cut it, okay? And that gives me the two tails that are going down with their angled bits, okay? Now, that is all I waste of the ribbon. And sometimes I don't even waste that, okay? So by using the ribbon off your roll like that, you will use your ribbon wisely, but you'll get a cute bow every single time. And I'm actually going to pop that bow on right there like that. So I'm going to use a glue dot to pop that bow on. And I think what I might do is I might use um, my other in color dots to go on this one because this one's a lot brighter so we've used a lot brighter papers and things for this one and inks so I think I might use these in color dots for this one all right so we've got two different types of in color dots which is great we've got the more brighter ones and then we've got the softer shimmery ones so I think this is great now the one thing that I wanted to show you is the peach pie is fantastic for in the middle of our flowers, creating that nice yellow center of our flowers. So with our take your pick tool, once again, we're going to pick that up. I'm going to pop them into the middle of the large flowers and then the smaller ones I'm going to use for the smaller flowers. So, I mean, super cute that I didn't have to color the insides of the flowers, I can use my in-color dots to do it for me. Okay. And then, of course, I can embellish with some of these dots. I, I feel like I might like to just use, uh, what do I want to use around? I might use some of the shy shamrock. No, I might use some of the petal pink just to create a little bit of interest around I'm struggling with my um ah with my putty this morning it's not wanting to play nice there and another one just there okay so as you can see you can use the yellow the the peach pie for inside now i'm just going to with this i'm actually just going to stamp some of these cute little flowers 
I'm going to create a really nice border using these cute little flowers. So I'm just going to stamp using these beautiful flowers. I, I love this stamp set. It was one of my favorite stamp sets in the catalog. How cute is that? A beautiful flowered border straight down there. So um, I think I like that sentiment too. I love that we are friends. So let's do that in Shy Shamrock inside. <laughs> You're going to try and make a bow tonight? Well, I hope that helps. I, I, I actually feel like I need to do just a bow video, uh, just showing how to do a bow. Uh, that, that ribbon is not probably the best one to try doing a bow you need a ribbon that's quite smooth it's got quite a bit of grain in the ribbon so therefore it doesn't slide through satin ribbons are fantastic for learning how to tie a bow satin ribbons are the best for buying but for tying bows okay um i must be a little bit of a ribbon queen i mean they i know they call me the, the bow lady from bow desert but honestly i love ribbon i just think it sets it off okay so there we go. I love that we are friends for you. I love that we are friends. All right. And then, of course, a spritzing of my wink to add a little bit of shimmer and shine on the front and then on the inside of the card. Okay. So there we have the second gorgeous card that we have created today. So um, let me see. Where did I put the first one I created? <laughs> I have no idea where I put it. Where did I put that card? It's gone missing in action. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Underneath everything, everything piled up. So there you go, the two gorgeous cards that we created today using some of our sale products. So honestly, if you have loved this, um, I want to just go through the prices of these again. So Petal Park um is the stamp set itself so this one here which is this one that we used the stamp set itself is reduced from $41 to $20.50 so you need to pop it in your cart and don't pop it in your cart and leave it there and think you're going to finish the order later on because if someone buys all the product it's gone okay now the punch that goes with that is not reduced because that punch is actually going through so the punch is still at full price the other things that I used were the um, gorgeous, here we go, Country Bouquet stamp set, which is this one here that we created. Country Bouquet stamp set, the beautiful um, countryside blossoms embossing folder and the punch. Now, this stamp set is reduced from $41 to 1640 the punch is reduced from $39 to $19.50 and the embossing folder is reduced from $15 down to $10.50. So for $46, you can get all of those products to then turn around and create that gorgeous card. Now, I am telling you, the Country Bouquet is a real bargain. So, um, so as I said, all of these products are while supplies last. You can put any of the sale products into a starter kit, and I would love to have you as part of my Wild Heart Crafters team. Um, and then you can also um, pop the sale products after you've joined and got the starter kit price. You get to choose $235 worth of product, and you only pay $169. And then you actually get to reorder again during the month of April and get the sale items with an extra bonus of 20% discount on top. So we, as a part of Stampin' Up, get the best for our money. So it is definitely the value for money and is honestly the best way to buy your Stampin' Up products. So if you're interested, I am going to be around all day today. Please feel free to give me a call if you wanted to ask any questions, if you have any, any concerns. There is my join link down in the bottom, show more box down below on YouTube if you were thinking about joining. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me and give me a call. I'm more than happy to talk about anything that will guide you in and see if it's what you actually think is a good fit for you so thank you everyone or otherwise as I said this is the deal that I'm doing all of these kits that I have in here 
for anyone that spends $150 or more, you will get, and so the first ones that get in, they're going to get the big kits. They're going to get the kits that are like, like a Stamps Club kit, okay? So Stamps Club kit, there's enough to make six cards in that. The big kits will go first um, and the smaller kits will go last. So please make sure if you're ordering $150 or more, I will send you one free kit. If you order $200 or more, I will send you two free kits. If you order $250 or more, I will send you three full kits. That is my birthday special for the whole entire month. And I can tell you, I have loads of kits. I will send them all out um, at the end. Uh, sorry, I will send them all out mid-May. I will see, I will tally them all up. I will see who actually earns the kits and I will send them all out mid-May because I'm going on my incentive trip. So I have to wait and see who orders to the end of the month to see who's going to get them. And when I get home, I will be home, back home, I think on the 10th of May, I will actually um, send get the kits all sorted and send them out through the post free of charge to you for a thank you for ordering with me during April. So as I said, you can actually... Use the QR code there. That actually has my host code all connected to it. You can jump on over to my website, check out the awesome sale. It started today and I'm telling you things are going quick. They're definitely going quick and people are buying up because people have been anticipating this sale. So um, so if there's things on your wish list and they're on sale and they're massively reduced, please make sure you jump on and order today um, as soon as possible to make sure that you're guaranteed to get them because it's all while supplies last. Thank you for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed the two creations that I created today. Um, and I will be back here live again at 8.15 a.m. tomorrow morning for another live crafty session with you. Thank you, everyone. I will catch you all again tomorrow. Have a